Dave Rubin of The Rubin Report discusses all things Justin Trudeau from an American perspective. Enjoy the show. The theme of today's show is sort of a, a follow-up to yesterday where we talked about those European elections and how there really is a populist movement happening across the country, uh, across the world, actually. Anyway, Justin Trudeau, who is one of the main stooges of this globalist movement, who has wrecked Canada, um, who has, who hopefully just has a, a limited amount of time left as prime minister. Uh, well, he is very upset that the right wing parties across Europe won because that means the people are expressing their opinions and they don't really like the powers that be. And he's one of the powers that be and it could happen to him too. So here's Justin. We have seen uh, around the world a rise of uh, populist uh, right-wing forces in just about every democracy uh, that we've seen. And um, it is of concern to see uh, political parties choosing to instrumentalize anger, fear, division, anxiety. It's just meaningless nothing. But he is fearful that there will be a populist right-wing uprising also in Canada, and it's interesting because when he talks about a populist right wing, he talks about populist right wing forces, and he said they cause anger and division. And it's like, dude, here's that mirror comment that I say basically every day, just get a mirror, Justin. What is it that you did in the not too distant past in Canada? You guys might remember this. After discussing with cabinet and caucus, after consultation, with premiers from all provinces and territories, after speaking with opposition leaders, the federal government has invoked the Emergencies Act. In addition, financial institutions will be authorized or directed to render essential services to help address the situation, including by regulating and prohibiting the use of property to fund or support illegal blockades. We are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. It really, it's so extraordinary with this guy. But the just lying through the teeth that the Canadian truckers who just didn't want to be forced to be vaccinated, want to go to work, that they had racist flags. Yeah, we couldn't find any racist flags. And that they were stealing food from homeless people. It's just not that they, they protested and they cleaned up after the protests. We showed you videos of that. He locked down their bank accounts. He forced churches to be closed. He is a horrific, evil authoritarian leader, just again in a nice suit. That's all he is. And he has shown no contrition. There has never been a mea culpa. So at the, at the moment, while in that first clip we just showed you, he's very worried about those angry people who seemingly just want borders and want you know Europe to be for Europeans. And I don't know, the UK is different than Ireland and have a border and that's okay. And that's what Canadians now want is they're sh having jihadists roam across the streets, which we'll get to that in just a moment. It's like he shows no, there's just nothing. There's just nothing in him that is like, oh, maybe I am the bad guy. But even years later, he was doubling down on all of that crap. Does the government owe those people who were wrapped up and had their financial assets frozen, but were not involved with the protest, an apology or compensation? Those were uh, very important considerations that we we're pleased that the government, that, that the commission highlighted, but I can tell you they were part of our deliberations as well. And as you say, uh, the commissioner determined that those measures were appropriate and uh, useful uh, in this context. Again, all just reverse of the truth. He's just evil. He speaks calmly, I know. You know, interestingly, the woman that in both of those videos, you can go back and check later, that's to his side. One time she's in a mask in the first one, but she's just cracked out. Her eyes are going crazy and her head's going crazy. Everyone thinks she's on crack. I'm not a crack expert. I've never done crack. You'd have to ask Hunter Biden what like all the side effects of crack are. Uh, but that's Victoria. Her name is uh, Christina, right? Christine Freeland. And she's one of the members of parliament there and she's pretty cracked out. It's just, it's just such a clown show of ridiculous people. Now it's interesting though, because, okay, you might be watching this going, oh, Dave, it was years ago. So he closed some bank accounts. So he claims some people stole 
food from homeless people and that racist like so what the good thing that's happening in canada right now is that more and more people are waking up to how absolutely dysfunctional the place is it's very sad it's it should not be this way in canada canada is such a wonderful country and you know how many people i meet right now here in florida you know we get all the snowbirds right so these are canadians that because obviously canada it's cold basically all year uh, but we but particularly in the winter so all these snowbirds they have places that's what we call them in florida they have all their condos down here and most of them go back in the summer so most of the canadians that are in florida throughout you know, say like October through May, they then go back to Canada for the summer in Canada where it's a little bit warmer. I am telling you everywhere I go now, I, people come up to me and say that they're Canadians and they're now staying for the summer because they don't even want to go back. So Canada has a major problem on its hands. One of the people who's been speaking out a ton about how awful Justin Trudeau is and what's going on in Canada is a Canadian. Uh, you know him as Mr. Wonderful on Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary, and here he is on Fox Business because Canada is the richest country on earth run by idiots. And I hate to say that as a Canadian because I have a passport, right. but I'm also Irish and I'm also Emirati, but I'm really unhappy about the way Canada's run. And I'm not picking at any one politicians, very weak skill sets in management there. And that's the premise by which you want someone from business to run a country. Um, you, you've been very public in your disdain for the prime minister now, Prime Minister Trudeau, that he's doing a horrible job, that he's making things worse. You still subscribe to that, I guess, right? He is one of the most successful politicians in history. He's been in that seat forever. He has zero executional skills. He is a horrible manager. He perhaps is the worst manager Canada's ever been under. The absolute worst. It can't get worse. Absolutely a negative 10. Yeah, so could he have been a little clearer about what he thinks about Justin Trudeau? And it's not just uh, Mr. Wonderful that thinks that about Justin Trudeau. Remember, Justin Trudeau has created these coalitions in Canada where he's receiving about 30% of the vote. So most people do not like him. Most Canadians are good and do not want this, and they better uh, start electing some other people. So let's jump from a guy who has really wrecked Canada on so many fronts to a guy that now is trying to save Canada. And I don't know that Canada can be saved and I don't know that a politician can save him, but the new leader of the Conservative Party, Pierre Polivet, uh, he uh, here is talking about a new liberal, so this is from the Trudeau government, online censorship bill, uh, because Trudeau doesn't want mean people saying things because mean people are mean and they're mean and they'll say something about my son. The federal government has said that its uh, online harms bill is imminent. Uh, they've said this bill will include, among other things, a ban on, on so-called online hate speech. As you know, the Conservatives a decade ago repealed Section 13 of the Canadian Human Rights Act, which the Liberals ha have talked about reintroducing and, and tried in the last parliamentary term. Will the Conservatives oppose the reintroduction of these provisions and the Liberals' approach to so-called online hate speech? Yes we will oppose Justin Trudeau's latest attack on freedom of expression. And um, I want to ask, what does Justin Trudeau mean when he says, when he says the word hate speech? He means speech he hates. So for example, let's go through some of the things he said is hate speech. Jerry Butts, the PMO uh, puppet master, said that it was hate speech to criticize Trudeau for using the ridiculous term people kind, right? <laughs> the, Justin Trudeau said anyone who criticized him during the pandemic was engaging in hate speech. Um, basically anybody who disagrees with his radical agenda when it comes to kids, he says is hate speech. He attacked Muslim parents who were protesting against his agenda. Is he going to criminalize those Muslim parents for protecting their children in schools? It's so great when the, the complete absurdity of intersectionality is exposed. So of course what, uh, what Paul Levé is referring to there is that there were some Muslim parents in Canada who didn't want the crazed gender nonsense to be taught to their kids, so they were upset, and then Trudeau went after the Muslims. In the first video that we showed you, he's talking about the hate of the riot, the hate that the people that are in the rise of populism across Europe have. And then he's also pushing for a hate speech bill. So if you criticize Justin Trudeau, if you go against his crazed gender nonsense, if you say that Canada should, I don't know, be for Canadians, will he say all of that is hate speech? 
Yeah, probably. And then will you be able to get online? Who knows? Will he freeze your bank account? It's quite possible. And you do all remember about eight years ago when a little known uh, psychology professor from Toronto who kind of sounds like Kermit the Frog was a little bit concerned that there was gonna be forced pronouns in Canada and everyone said he was crazy and that's happening too. So it is just, it, they are doing it right in front of us. And let's, so they're coming with these authoritarian rules and they wanna make sure they can censor the internet and Biden's not in charge and all of this stuff. I think we've laid out a bit of a situation here. The president is not well here in America. The guy up in Canada is a psychopathic authoritarian lunatic in a nice suit. Uh, we have problems as it pertains to big tech, uh, but you guys get it. The last form of censorship right now, they have big tech and now they are also weaponizing the courts. And of course they still have legacy media and that is what we're fighting. So it's this giant, it's, I don't even know, it's a three headed monster, it's a four headed monster, it's a seven headed monster, but it's a monster and we gotta stop, we gotta start chopping off some heads. We'll get to that in a second. Not really beheading, not really beheading. I wanna be clear about that. We are not endorsing beheading here. That's for the other guys. Uh, we don't behead. It was a metaphorical beheading. They can freeze your bank account. They can say you're mean and you're racist. They can censor you. They can do all of this stuff. And then of course they can have the courts go after you as well. That is what they are doing to Donald Trump right now. Check out The Rubin Report on YouTube a really informative and entertaining show. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe for more videos.